All right, what's going on, guys? My name is Nick Abraham, and in this video, I'm going to walk you through how to actually identify and fix your cool email deliverability issues. So I've went through every single tool, every single process. I even built my own inbox placement test to be able to identify cold email deliverability issues. And a lot of it, it's not needed. And so, you know, there's tons of people that will speak about deliverability and they make it a lot more complicated than it needs to be. And I'm going to walk you through my simple framework to identify cold email deliverability issues and how to resolve them. So here's why you should listen to me. I send well over a million cold emails a month. I send it for over 120 active clients at my agency, Libra.io. And if you just look me up, Nick Abraham or Libra.io, you're going to see we've been documenting cold email deliverability practices and just like lead gen strategies for over the last three years, maybe even four. And I've been doing it for well over four years. And so when it comes to deliverability, I've tried everything. And here's a simple solution. If you are following the fundamentals, and I'm going to go through the fundamentals, and your reply rate is dropping month over month, your reply rate, not your open rate, your reply rate is dropping month over month, you probably have a deliverability issue. And if that's the case, instead of trying to figure out what's causing it and all this, as long as you're following the fundamentals, just delete the inbox, set up a new domain and set up a new inbox. Domains are cheap. Inboxes are even cheaper and they're very easy to automate. And even, even if you don't automate, it's very easy to delegate. And so instead of trying to figure out how to fix and repair and put all this time and energy into troubleshooting and inboxes deliverability, just go set up a new one. That's the simple solution. So now let's talk about the fundamentals you need to have in place so that you know that if your reply rate isn't dropping, it's not a deliverability issue and it's probably something else. So let's get into it. So the first thing I want to just point out is that, you know, we have clients that they have extreme product market fit. And that leads to a ton of engagement to their cold email campaigns, meaning that they're getting a ton of positive responses, tons of meetings booked. And so in those cases, I could put links in the email. I could do a whole bunch of crazy stuff in the email and still get incredible results because there's so much engagement. You just got to think about it, right? Like if Google or Microsoft is seeing one of their inboxes, getting a majority of their emails responded to and conversations happening, they're probably going to think, okay, this guy's not sending spam. He's probably sending something legitimate. So let me make sure that it goes to the primary folder and doesn't get missed. That's just the general like thought process there, right? And so if you can have great product market fit, which means you're just selling to the right market with the right solution and they're actually interested, like a lot of this stuff won't matter to you. But that's probably not 95% of you. Like out of all of our clients, there's very few that actually have true product market fit, in my opinion. Most of you guys watching this and most of the clients that you may be managing if you're a lead gen agency don't have really good offers. And so you got to kind of have these fundamentals in place to make sure that the deliverability and the reputation of the inbox is maintained. And if it isn't, you just set up a new one, right? So the first thing is, is that you spread the volume across multiple secondary domains. You never send out of your primary domain. And so, you know, we'll typically buy 10 domains and then we will buy them through pork bun. We'll set up inboxes with Outlook. We find that Outlook inboxes are easier to manage when the campaign's actually live. There's less lockouts, less bans, less authentications, less disconnects and everything of that sort. So I highly recommend Outlook inboxes. I do believe though, in the next two years, what Google is doing right now to restrict cold emails, Outlook will also do. And I think it'll probably happen in less than two years. I think it's really going to happen in the next year. And so that's just something to, to, to keep in mind. But as of right now, whatever today's date is, what is it? April 2nd, I would go ahead and use Outlook inboxes. And you just want to get those secondary domains and forward them over to your primary domain. So if you buy domains, just buy it. And this is the other thing too, with the name of the domains, always buy them in .com and try not to have any numbers in them. There's infinite ways you can read say your name. So ours is Libra.io. So we just say get Libra.com, try Libra.com, LibraSolutions.com. Those are the secondary name, secondary domains and like the names we kind of associate with them. And we just forward them to our primary domain, Libra.io. Simple. And then when it comes to setting up inboxes, a lot of you guys don't actually set up the records properly. And sometimes you do set it up properly, but then like the DKIM key didn't actually register. So the simple thing to do here is just verify that it's all set up properly. Just go to MX Toolbox, type in your domain. It's going to tell you if your DKIM is missing or if your DMARC isn't set up properly. And then you just go fix that. Simple, right? And then you want to set up at max two inboxes per domain. That's what we are finding to be the best. Anytime we go more than that, we start to see a massive drop in reply rates and we'll see a lot more disconnects with the inbox. And so just set up two inboxes per domain all on out. That's it. So that's everything on the inbox technical side up set up. Now let's talk about warm up. So I have found that inboxes that are in warm up longer do tend to always outlast inboxes that are kind of just thrown into campaigns quicker. And once again, this all comes back down to product market fit. Like if you have extreme product market fit, you probably can throw an inbox into a good campaign and have it run and it does good and it stays well you know around for a while but if you have a pretty bad offer you don't get much engagement regardless and you throw it into the campaign day one it's probably gonna get disconnected it's probably gonna start dying out 
way quicker. So I recommend that you warm it up for a minimum of two weeks. If you can go longer, that's great, but a minimum of two weeks. And then when it comes to the actual warm up, and I, I even have it in this graphic, and I kind of am taking back what you know we've done in the past. The warm up, like the numbers and the metrics, aren't as important as you think. And, and what I mean by that, I mean is like you know putting your reply rate at forty percent on day one, and then. 80% on day two, like in the beginning, just have a range of 20 to 40 emails, or it should start at five to 20 emails on the randomizer and smart lead. And then just put the reply rate at like something like 60%. That's good. That works. And then do that for the first 14 days. And then when it actually goes live into the campaign, we'll talk about them a bit. Let me talk about copywriting real quick. So this is before we even talk about campaign management on the copywriting side, so many things to do, right? So the first thing is, is that plain text only, no links, no signatures, no calendar links in the initial emails. If you want to do in the response handling, link, go for it. But in the initial email, plain text only, turn off your open tracking. That open tracking, like if you're assessing your deliverability by open tracking, you're done. Like it, it does not have a lot of correlations and a lot of the data, depending on the markets you're selling to, to the people that you're selling to, it can range. That's why I think reply rate and even further, what we do is look at true reply rate. That's the number you want to assess. And true reply rate to me means like actual conversations. So no out of offices, no auto replies, like true engagement numbers. That number is the number you want to look at. You also want to just track general reply rate as well. I look at both. So that's just something to kind of keep in mind. And then with your copy, like stop sending a novel in the email. Like it really should be conversational. You know, do a little check to make sure you're not putting a lot of words in there that indicate spam and just use a lot of syntax and subject line as well as in the actual email copy. And here's the other thing too, right? Like you could have product market fit, but if you write a 10 step email sequence, you're going to have a lot of people that mark you as spam and email five to 10. And so keep your sequences short. I like to do, just do a two step sequence. I would just see great results from that. So that's everything on the copywriting front. Now, when it comes to actual sending in the campaign management, you have to keep your bounce rate under 2%. If it goes above 2%, pause your campaign, export the leads, and then go verify with another tool. And then take all those leads that came back as invalid, add it to your DNC, and it's automatically going to block the leads in the campaign or just go delete the leads. Either way it works. And it doesn't matter what database you use. And if they tell you they verify the leads or not, always verify the leads outside of the database. Apollo will tell you that their leads are verified. They're not. You know, if you just raw dog a list, you're going to get a crazy bounce rate. So don't do that. Simple. And then when it comes to the actual management of the campaign, you want to take all the unsubscribes, everyone that's giving you an aggressive reply in the cold email and put them to your DNC so that you don't reach out to them in month two and month three. Because what happens is in month one, you email some dude, let's say you may email me. I tell you to take me off my list, take me off your list. And you don't do that. In month three, you know, let's say you're just recycling contacts. You may add me into that campaign. And guess what happens? I'm going to mark your email as spam instead of taking the time to say, take me off your list. And so manage that properly and make sure that your DNC is up to date at all times. And then when it comes to the actual volume of the inbox, the simple solution is just keep your inbox volume low and scale horizontally, meaning that you scale through more inboxes. So I never try to send more than 60 emails and 60 emails is still stretching it right now we send actually 50 emails per inbox per day and 25 of those are on warm-up and on the 25 emails that are on warm-up we put the randomized range at 20 to 25 and we put the reply rate at 100 percent. and the thought process there is like okay let's say our cold email sucks where if we're sending 50 emails 25 of them are warm-up and they're all getting responded to so technically from that inbox we're getting a 50 percent reply rate which is pretty good so you know i feel like google microsoft they're gonna say okay hey i'm not gonna actually block this guy's emails because he's getting a decent amount of replies and that's what we do. And then, like I mentioned, if your reply rate gets below two and a half percent, that's where I'm noticing that, like, even if you have a really shitty offer, you're still going to get responses that are usually telling you unsubscribe, take me off your list and things of that sort. But if it's under two and a half percent, that means that, you know, you're not getting anyone engaged with you, which means that a majority of your emails are probably going to spam. And so if it's under two and a half percent, just kill it. So this is the fundamentals. This is what you got to do. If you can do this and you can send your cold emails and you're getting some replies, they're just not anyone wanting to book a call. It's usually an offer issue, which is product market fit. And so let's kind of go over why your campaign is not getting results. And, it, and it, what I've seen for the most part, for the people that don't actually follow the fundamentals or they do follow the fundamentals, but still run into issues, it's usually just three things. So the first one is they're assessing their deliverability by open rates. And I think I kind of touched on this earlier. Could be wrong. I've recorded this video like three times now. So I uh, don't know which one I talked about it on. But don't assess your campaigns in terms of deliverability based off of open rates. I see people that'll freak out that, you know, hey, last week I had a 60% open rate. I launched the same campaign and now I have a 40% open rate. And it's like, well, first of all, that metric is not even 
through it anymore. And I wouldn't freak out unless the open rate was at something like bizarre. That's like 2%. And even then I still wouldn't freak out because in some markets, that's how it is, right? And so you can't necessarily say that it's a deliverability issue. And so you want to assess deliverability by actual reply rates. And really like the best way to assess deliverability, like full structure is every campaign, every offer is different. Every market you send to is different. But generally speaking, what you want to do is build a bridges, launch three to four campaigns, different industries, same offer, you know, maybe even do different styles of copy and just see what generally you're getting as your email to lead ratio across all four, the blended e email, to lead email to lead ratio and figure out what your reply rate is and your true reply rate is, right? And those are your, your averages. And now if it gets widely below those averages, you know, there's a deliverability issue. And that's the best way to assess deliverability, not, oh, my open rate dropped or, you know, I'm only getting a 4% reply rate, but hey, like I'll be sent, you know, 10 million emails. Like, okay, obviously reply rates can be less than you're gauging someone else that, you know, sent a thousand. Anyways, that's the first thing, open rates. The second thing too, is like to the inbox setup, they're using all these new SMTP providers and they're just not reliable. Who owns the largest email infrastructure in the world? It's Google, it's Microsoft, just use theirs. It's that simple. People are trying to cut costs and save a couple pennies here and there. This does not make sense. Inboxes are not expensive. They're not. And if you can't afford them, like you need to find a another, and like maybe Outbound isn't for you. Maybe you go, you know, figure out how to make organic work because there really is no cheaper acquisition system in B2B sales when it comes to cold email outside of like just organic content. And then the last reason why your campaign is probably not getting results is just product market fit. Like what you're selling is actually not a good solution. Your market, or it could be a good solution, but the market you're selling to just doesn't want it or value it. And of course they're not going to engage with your campaign. And so it's not a deliverability issue. Your email is just landing in the inbox. You're just not replying because they're not interested. And so those are the three reasons that you're probably, that I'm most commonly seeing right now that you're in the reasons why your campaign isn't getting results. The other thing that I'm starting to see as well is that, you know, people are freaking out in March and they're saying, oh, smart lead is tanking and my results are bad because of smart lead. Smart lead is messing up. And it's like, that makes no sense. I send over a million emails a month. I track this on a week to week basis. My team tracks this on a week to week basis. Oh, you look at these numbers. And so we know if anything bad is going on. And the last thing I would blame is the sequencer. It would make no sense. Like it just doesn't. And in a, in a time like March, right? You have spring break. That's really two weeks, depending on, you know, what states you're in. So that's a lot of out of offices. That's what we saw. And then we also had Easter this last weekend, which is once again, a lot of out of offices. So of course your email to lead ratio is going to be a little bit higher than usual. Your point of set rates are going to be a little bit lower than usual. Your reply rates are going to be a little bit lower than usual. But that's just because of the actual season. It's not a smart lead issue. It's not a cold email is over issue. It's just the season. That's it, right? And so this video is how I think about deliverability. Like I mentioned before, the simple solution, if I'm doing all the fundamentals properly and I start to see that my reply rate, my true reply rate is starting to go down month over month. I'm just killing the inbox and I'm setting up a new one. Don't try to spend all this time and energy trying to pinpoint why the inbox is going bad. Like this is the fundamentals. That's all you have to follow for the most part. Every situation is different, but for the most part, you know, I'm running it for over 120 clients. And this is what I see. So if you have any questions, feel free to just DM me on Twitter. I'm pretty decent at getting back to my DMs. I'm also pretty active on LinkedIn. I'll probably see your DM there because I get less DMs, DMs on LinkedIn. And I'm more than happy to help out. But this is all it is when it comes to deliverability. Don't overcomplicate it. Don't spend a lot of time and energy into it. Send more emails, increase the volume, reach out to more net new people and try to solve for product market fit. That's what's going to save your campaign and your results.